welcome Melanie Campbell, founder of Startup Peel, to share about the Entrepreneurs World Cup. Now to hand it over to Melanie to tell us all about the Entrepreneurship World Cup. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jenna. It's a pleasure to be here today with um, Ken W. I would say, well, the Canadian Women's Chamber of Commerce, and um, I've seen Nancy's journey from the very beginning, so I think this is really exciting to see that to where we are today. And I'm also joining you from the unceded territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, in um, just outside of Toronto, but it is still the Mississaugas of the, uh, the Credit. And I'm excited to talk to you today about the Entrepreneurship World Cup, brought to you by the Global Entrepreneurship Network. So little bit about Entrepreneurship Network um, is they basically created a program to help entrepreneurs so of all diverse um, um, areas within, it's actually global. So it says global and it is global. Um, and then in the fact that I'm representing Canada, so I've been the host of Canada for the last just over four years, probably about five years now. And they launched the very first iteration in 2019 and a Canadian actually took first place. So the Canadian winner, um, the company is now called Fluid AI, used to be called Nerve, and they won uh, just over $500,000 US for first place. And they also received um, investments at that time. So you're pitching in Riyadh. So the end goal is to send Canadians to Riyadh to pitch. Yay. Last year, we had um, three young leaders that joined. So they're all from basically out east. Uh, Marlo, we are Marlo. Um, and they're from Ontario. We had uh, Bronwyn Bridges from Newfoundland, Prag McLean. And then we also had uh, David, um, David Hodgson went and Sarah Fidello is actually the co-founder, but we only had uh, space for one co-founder from that uh, company. So, but they also play. So all of those Canadians that out of over 200 countries, um, they were in the top 100 and then they end up being the top 20. So to see Canadians in the top 20 is phenomenal. So I'm going to dive right in. And then if there's any questions, you know, just jump in, feel free to ask. So what is the World Cup? These are the tables of concept. This is what I'm going to go over today. So what is the World Cup? I'm going to go over a list of all the past winners, why you should enter, and the categories and the benefits of entering uh, this pitch competition. So, so just... To start, so over 400,000 uh, entrepreneurs, actually more now. So what they're actually pitching for and buying for is over a million dollars US in pricing. So as I mentioned before, it's over 200 countries that enter. Um, the great thing is you're provided training. So for Canada, our entries have been open since October of last year, and they close June 28th of this year. And then we will have our finals in um, Toronto, our GTA, uh, August 8th. So we are hoping to have five entrepreneurs from each category. So from ideation stage, startup, and scaling stage. And I'll go into those stages a bit more um, after as we go through the presentation. So a little bit about the collaboration um, and why it's critical for the entrepreneurship um, competition. Is a picture of Kevin O'Leary. So this is one of the very first ones from October, uh, sorry, from November in 2019. So in this whole ring, we have entrepreneurs or universities, and the winner from the very first one was actually out of Waterloo. Um, there's media. Government tends to come into this as well, too, because they're looking for the next greatest thing or anything that can answer um, a problem. Basically, they're an answer to a problem that's existing. And we really um, focus on social impact as well, too. And then we have a list of all the EWC alumni. Um, and Canada ranks very high on the alumni list, so which is fantastic. There's a lot of VCs and investors that attend. And then the different corporations that sponsor um, the event. So we are still actively looking for sponsors to be um, being very straightforward. Um, just in terms of pricing, we want to make sure that the event is beyond worthwhile for everyone that's participating because you are running a business and you need to take time from your business. So we want to make sure that it's wholesome and it's exciting as well. 
So this is a little bit small, hard to read, but I can share this deck. Um, Jen, I'll share this with you. So if anybody wants to gain access to it, they can see this after. So I can upload it as well too to the site if that works. Is that okay? Yeah, I have it so I can upload this pitch deck like right after, so. Okay, fantastic, awesome. Um, so yeah, so in terms of the different categories, so it gives you an idea. So about mm, an ideation stage, there's about 23% that have entered, 20% in growth, and then early stage is about 57%. Um, it's, it's a phenomenal opportunity. As you can see, many of the countries that they have uh, in their India, it tends to be like a really big proponent of it. Canada, even though we, we always do really well, we don't have as many entries, but the entries that we have, they're actually really good quality entries. I would love to see more Canadians and more women actually enter as well. Too. So being a little biased, but more women would be good. Um, so the five stages of the uh, pitch competition for this year. Um, as mentioned, our entries close June 28th. Some countries are closing sooner. Some are closing a little bit later. And it's been open for some time, since September. And the reason why we're leaving it till June 28th is because I'm doing these info sessions to get more people to learn more about EWC, the importance of participating and getting your name out there, getting your business out there. And while you're out there, and more people taking interest to you. Like even the posts that I've done on, on LinkedIn, we can see a lot of interest being taken into the companies. And these um, the startups that won last year, there's more opportunity that's constantly open to them. So we want to make sure that we recognize even the top 15 that are going to participate and not just the top three. So those are really, really critical. Um, August 8th will be the Canadian finals. We're hoping to do it in person, but if worse comes to worse, it'll be virtual. Um, at this time, we're looking to see if maybe we can get WestJet or, or Air Canada, someone on board, that if we have entries and finalists from outside of Ontario, they can be flown in, which will be phenomenal. So after the Canadian finals are done and we have our three that would be buying to go on to Riyadh, there is a virtual boot camp that takes place in October. So this boot camp is, is um, quite rigorous, but it's put on by the Global Entrepreneurship Network. And what it is, is basically preparing the startups that come into there to pitch and they are gaining, uh, buying for an opportunity to be in the top 100. So if you think about all the countries that are pitching, if they send three people, so you have quite a bit. And as I mentioned, Canada has done extremely well over the last few years. And we want to see three more Canadians go on to pitch in Riyadh in December of 2024. And it will be 100 startups that will be pitching and we would love as I, as I mentioned I'm biased because I'd love to see Canadians go on to pitch on this global stage in Riyadh they will compete for um a million dollars in, in pricing so cash and pricing and then there's additional categories that they brought in this year so some are on clean water um there's clean tech there's ocean there's quite a few more so I can add that um Jenna I'll add that to the existing deck that I have and then that way you have it so everyone can see it. Or I can just add it as an addendum so we can still post this. And after EWC in Riyadh, there's so much support that you're, you're given. All the finalists and everyone that's pitched, they've gone on, they've made great contacts with everyone from other countries. Um, they have, many of them actually have gained interest from investors while they're pitching on stage. So they, it's a fantastic opportunity to be in, you know, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia where, they're, depending on your vertical, the opportunities are endless. It's just basically what you want to use and what you want to do with those opportunities, it's yours. And one thing to note is when you are, um, your opportunity to go to Riyadh, it's fully covered. Everything is paid by Global Entrepreneurship Network. So there's no money that comes out of your pocket unless you want to buy something, spending money. Um, your visa is taken care of. Um, they manage your flight and your hotel. So when you land in Riyadh, there will be someone that'll come and greet you at the airport and then you're shuttled over to, to your hotel. So, and Canadians can actually bring a, a group of delegates. So we're hoping to do that again, do that this year. So global finals, um, just to talk about that a little bit, um, be mindful of the time. So this was, this picture is actually from the very first event. Um, where everyone wore their shirts and you can see Canada and Canada took home first place. So all the different countries around the world that are 
third of Hitch. Uh, we want to make sure that Canadians are also gaining some access to that because there's workshops, there's keynotes. So obviously the networking, there's the opportunity to gain and really grow your business. And we would love to see more women take advantage of that opportunity and get that opportunity as well, too. Previous judges, this is just a list of previous judges. Uh, Jeff Hoffman, um, you know, well known, and His Royal Highness Prince Khalid, so uh, bin Halawid, and there is Kevin O'Leary. We last year we had a fantastic group of judges as well, too. So it's very open. We had some very high ranking, very um, impactful women judges that were there. And I loved it because you can see some of the questions that they asked uh, individuals pitching really looking to make sure that it's a very balanced uh, group of entrepreneurs and founders. So, you know, even seeing some of the founders that are out there pitching in the companies, if they were just male centric, um, there was a woman judge and she was asking, I, I see you talking about equality, but I don't see any women on your team. So why is that? So really, you really need to be prepared and be ready for any question that you can ask. So I'm going to go through the winners, Canadian winners. So this is uh, our very first winner. So 2019, it's a small deck about it. I won't go into too much detail, but Nerve was the company at the time. They're now called Fluid AI. And what their um, innovation was to detect uh, bleeding during post-op uh, surgery. So, And the, at the time when they pitched, they did get the 500,000 US, but they also were able to find investors. Uh, someone saw them pitching, invested in, there was a doctor, hospitals that decided that they would love to learn more about the technology and leverage that technology. So that was pretty cool. In 2020, we also stood on the global podium. So we came in uh, second and third. So Flight um, is a company that uh, really cool innovation about materials. So it's like, um, I won't go into too much detail. Sorry, I just uh, I can think about, but I want to go into too much detail about it because it's it's for uh, surface. If the material changes, like metal, especially surfaces, they have a technology that they have that increases the life uh, cycle of the product. Um, Genesis Bioscience is another company. They came in third place, so they both went on to pitch in the ad, and they came in uh, second, third. Um, in 2021, Nuha, um, they did, during that time, we didn't go to pitch directly in Riyadh, but they were our finalists. So um, just because that was the whole time with COVID and everything was very challenging. The other um, Canadian that won as well that year was Chris, um, well, Dr. Chris from Intelligex. And this is about um, spinal cord injuries and being able to help um, the health of a patient. Uh, so this is Bra uh, Bronwyn from Pragma Clin, and she was our IDS stage winner. Um, she is the young lady, such a powerhouse, um, really working on Parkinson's disease. And she is from Newfoundland. And I first saw Bronwyn when she pitched at the Woodward Cup. Uh, so it was really exciting to see this win. The next person, this is David from Hollow Medical, um, also again in top 20 which was fantastic. And then Marlo, um, so Harit and Nadia, they won 50,000. So they came in fourth place and 50,000 US has really helped to grow their business. And they were able to meet investors as well too. And they're doing extremely well because the 2022 EDSW uh, pitch actually was held in 2023, just because of COVID, so everything shifted a bit. So for the ideation category, um, these are the requirements, and this is where you determine where do I fit. So it could be just a prototype, could be an idea, you're self-funded, maybe you're unregistered or you're registered and you don't have a prototype, you're, but you're, you have like an MVP, you're thinking of something that's completely uh, commercially viable, you haven't made any money, um, or you've gotten to a point where um, you've prototyped it and you've made no money or you're an aspiring uh, entrepreneur, like uh, some of the students and some of the individuals that won were previous university research projects. Believe it or not, uh, Marlowe was a university project. Uh, NERV was also a project and university. Bronwyn's at uh, Pragma Claim was also a university uh, project. So there is such an open category and the ability there to do really well. Your startup category is you're seeking validation. So your, your company is commercially uh, viable, has an MVP that's out there. Uh, maybe you have uh, customer segmentation, you have market 
um, you're starting with early signs of growth, um, you know, maybe some early funding, and you're looking at how to create governance for your um, company, this is a great opportunity here for you. Or maybe you earn some seed round funding, maybe angel investment, or you're preparing to raise additional funding, you would fit in the startup category. For the scale up category, so you've had consistent growth over time. Um, you have defined um, areas, you have strong governance in your company, and what shows that you have repeatable business models. So it's not just one whale that you were able to secure. You have many uh, clients and you have continuously uh, moving forward. You can raise um, funding, so you have equity in terms of fundraising. And you can also show that you've grown organically and then you maybe your company is exit ready. So you never know. You might get there to a stage and um, you could be seeking acquisition or maybe private equity and uh, you're looking for the next best thing to move forward. So benefits of entering. So why you should participate. Um, so many different things. I haven't covered them all here but access to investors, surprising, not just the money monetary part of it, but pricing in terms of mentorship, so incredibly valuable that um, you just can't put a dollar value on that. There's the exposure of your brand, visibility, and then connecting to that global network, um, ability to meet friends, meet new people that you could possibly partner with, and especially you can scale that. And then when we talk about deeper understanding, we're talking about the insights of the ecosystem the thought leaders that are there that can help provide additional guidance. And this is the last slide. So this is um, Start Appeal, that's me. <laughs> and then we have this year we brought in Launch Path and they work a lot with um, um, out immigrants and different types of startups that want to come into Canada. So Start Visa programs, Thai Toronto is also Start a Visa program participant. And um, so they basically raised their hand this year to say, yes, we want to be a national host with you. We now have a few additional accelerators that have come on board that will be working with us. So like TreeFog um, and uh, Global Startups, that's another sort of visa program. So um, we're looking right now for some universities and additional other companies to come on board and work with us. And that's the end of my presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, this is incredible. It sounds like a great opportunity for Canadians to participate. Yeah, it is. It is. Hi, Miriam. <laughs> so you mentioned that, all, you know, the travel costs are covered. If I get selected, I can go. So what yes. costs are there for entrepreneurs to participate in this? Okay, it's free to enter. So there's no cost to enter it at all. The only the cost would be your time really it's what you want to put in it so if you said well i'm running my business from nine to five and i need about half hour to prepare to pitch and put something together that's the time that you're putting in but then you think about it what could the ben what could possibly be the benefits you could possibly win first prize i mean you know anything's possible we were on the podium before we had first place second third and fourth um and Strange enough, I was on one of the calls and I heard that um, in terms of the government of Marchant, there's some of the providers and the sponsors. They're like, we're looking at Canada again this year. and We think you're going to do great things. I'm like, OK, so not that much stress, right? <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's on the Canadians. I know. Yeah. And the thing is, like, we've always delivered. And they said, you know, it's it's kind of it, I think it's a compliment, really, because they said you are like Canada's always come with high quality entrepreneurs and you always come and you deliver. And so you said there's no costs to apply. You just fill out the forms, get your details in. Um, yeah. The experience is covered. So if you get selected, all of your travel is covered. There's lots of opportunities mm -hmm. to connect with people there. And, like, yes. and you said there's like a lot of other ancillary results that you get. So if you're selected, you're going to also get to network with people, meet a lot of funders, learn mm -hmm. about global you know, funding ecosystem, I guess. Yes. What would you say that um, someone who might be at the idea stage, so in the very mm -hmm. first category that you presented, um, mm -hmm. what would you say like for someone who's like stopped by, like, I don't think this is a good idea. I don't know. What would you tell them to do? Well, in all honesty, if it's an idea that you have and you haven't thought that, well, okay, let me back up a little bit. If you have an idea, and you put that much thought into doing it, there's nothing stopping you from entering. 
because if you don't enter, you, you don't know if you'll do well, right? So that's the first thing. The other thing about um, an idea stage is it's an opportunity for you to gain mentorship as well, too. Um, this year, we, we had a few of our ecosystem members um, that have put their hand up to say, hey, we want to help anyone that comes through. So hmm. we're going to be doing um, an IP webinar. So IP trademark webinar. So really, which is a very critical thing. Uh, most people they have an idea and they're thinking, eh, there's nothing really to it. It's just an idea. But what's your IP, right? Um, and others that we're going to have uh, Craig Elias. He does the Founder Fridays, so 150 Startups. And he will be doing a coaching and mentoring session for us. So for people learning how to pitch. That's a critical thing. It's the pitching thing that I think that's what frightens most people from entering anything is, oh, I can't pitch. What am I supposed to do? Give you five uh, slides for your deck. And what else happens after that? And they're thinking, yeah. uh, this is not going to work. So if you don't try it, you won't know. And this is, it's free to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you give any feedback, like for the applicants, when, if they're not selected, do they get like, hey, you're just not at the, the right stage yet? Or do they get some feedback? They have in the past. So usually what happens is when, um, it's a different platform this year. So in the previous years, when the judge goes through it, and we're, we don't actually see the startups this year because... Um, um, I, I've shied away from doing the judging just because many of them I've seen, I'm like, oh, I know that person. I know that. So I can't judge it. But yeah. they do get feedback and say, OK, you're at this stage. This is what you need to be put more into. Uh, what we would like to do this year is really offer like a post of it to just to go over and say, OK, do's and don'ts, maybe lessons learned, really, of what has happened. And I think it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, this is exceptional. I'm so glad we got the opportunity to go through this today and present it here on The Circle. And this recording will be up so people can watch it and, you know, replay it. And you're also in The Circle. So if anybody has any questions, can they DM you here? Oh, for sure. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay, perfect. So if you're looking for Melanie, she is under Startup Peel on our circle. So you can just message them and mm -hmm. she'll get back to you and let you know all you need to know about participating. And thank you so much for being here today, Melanie. It's been great and testing out this new circle live format with me. I really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. Yeah, exactly. It's lessons learned. Like, we're, okay, which button should I not push? You know, kind of thing. So, yeah, <laughs> makes a huge difference. Definitely. But I do appreciate you having me here today. It makes a, uh, it's such an impact for us to see it. And, you know, like I said, meeting Nancy at, I think it was a Cam C event. I know we all thought, but it was a Cam C event. And she was saying, I would really like to do this. What do you guys think about doing something that's like a women's chamber? Like, go for it. Just do it. And to see it at the stage it is now, I think it's such a blessing. It's amazing. And she's, like, it's not because it's her, but she's an incredibly sweet person, so genuine that you you just want to make sure that it's successful. And I think, you know, having this platform available to women is extremely important and just being there. So, yeah, thank you very much for having me here today. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>